Talk to me about formulations. The genius part of it is actually not the carbohydrates itself. It's the, it's it's, the it's packaging the mechanism. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yep, for sure. that, that, that's, that's the difference. So if you were consuming 60 grams per hour, spare, spare the money and buy orange juice or even put honey inside and drink it. The, 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 where it really comes up, where it differs itself is when you are really starting to push the limit of the concentration. But you can even take, you can even train yourself today. This is something we know. You can even take honey today and you can mix it. You can train yourself to go to higher values than what have previously been published, like pure normal products. But if you want to get to 160. This is when you need to- You need the technology. Yes, exactly. And, and no no fat and no protein, any amino acids throughout no. that whole race? No, we, we, we this is something uh, that was also done research on, but we ended up in the end pure glucose and fructose. And it actually has to do with actually how oxygen is being prioritized in the body. Because we have to limit, we have to consider two things here. It's easy to think that while you're only racing at 80% of your VO2 max or 70 or 90, whatever percentage it is of your VO2 max. But that's a little bit of a short circuit because what we have to think of is that this oxygen, like more oxygen is going to contribute to more heat as well. So it's not like you have an, you can just go whatever, oh, I'm rising at a so low percentage of view to max, so I can go whatever and do and in the beginning, because it always will accumulate towards the end of your race. That means already from the beginning, it's critical how you pace and your efficiency as well, because every inefficiency you have, either it's biochemical yeah. or anything like this, it will basically end up towards the end of the race. So this means also that at the moment you start, let's say, putting any other uh, substrates into or nutrients into your mixture that the body have to prioritize somehow in the system. That means also that there are only going to be less oxygen available for pure propulsion. And in the end, it's a pure propulsion that really sets the winner apart from the rest of the people there. So you basically want to peel away every, absolutely everything that doesn't contribute to, pro, to, to forward propulsion, use every milliliter, every mole of oxygen purely for that purpose and nothing else. Because oxygen is one of the limitations and yeah. that comes through whether we, we, we talk about uh, different kinds of substrate and these kind of things, which is still also a place where we, we, we don't know. We are actually doing quite some interesting research on different kinds of, of, of substrates from, from glucose, fructose. Uh, Have you looked at BH? HB, beta yeah. hydroxybutyrate? Yes. So we looked at BHB as well. And, and one of the things, because the thing here is that if you purely look at the stoichiometry, there are interesting things here. But the problem is that we cannot only do stoichiometry. We actually need to know the enthalpy and we also need to know the Gibbs free energy that is available and ideally mm -hmm. even the entropy. But, but not, okay. So the Gibbs free energy, if you're making the BHB yourself, much more complicated. But if you take it purely exogenously, and consider it an additional substrate above and beyond glucose. Do do we do we have reason to believe that we're going to get more ATP per mole of oxygen? No, because the the, the 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 practical limitation of this is that if we think when you do racing, you you can have a let's say if you think of this more first first order principle again. So if you do racing, and this was actually one of my first questions because we have been working together with uh, one of the leading brands uh, on or maybe or arguably the, the leading one, and they are situated here in in the U.S. But one of the one of the uh, um, limitations that you have to look at is basically when you are racing, this has a certain fuel demand. So there's a certain amount of fuel that needs to go through the system there. Yeah. And that means that in, in the context when we talk about glucose and fructose, we are we are looking at basically trying to replace as much as possible. We said, okay, glucose, fructose, or basically carbohydrates seems to be a very, very oxygen efficient fuel source when we when we when you do movement. But that means also that in order not to run out of this, we are trying to replace as much as possible of this to be able to race faster. Because if you said this is the certain, this is the fuel source I have available in my body, I'm going to race this fast. Obviously, I cannot go faster than this. So certain power number, certain duration will deplete this energy source or basically bring me close to depletion of that source. Okay, so that means okay, instead of then switching to other sources, or you're basically always using other sources as well. But trying to get more from that source means basically you have to replace more of the power. So more of the power now we have to create an environment where more power can come from the same source. So that means that, for example, if you are at around, let's say you were originally around at 80 grams or 90 grams, let's say 80 grams for simplicity, say 80 grams of carbohydrates, and you have a biochemical efficiency of 20%, for example, that means basically you're getting out, or if you say 4.2, let's say you could get basically so one gram basically would be then the equivalent of, let's say, one joule per second or one watt, more or less like this. So you could get from that one. So if you double this from 80 to 160 now, that means basically now you can get double the amount of what's coming from 
from from, ca- from from carbohydrates. Yeah. Yep. The problem with 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 ketones is that you the strategy is not to basically fuel the amount you are u- using in a race. You don't fuel with ketones in the same way. Like if you go to 70, 80, or even 100 milliliters of 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 of, of ketone consumption in an hour, you're gonna have so high levels of ketones in your body that you will start to feel almost like you are getting diabetic like you, you feel like you're you, you, you're bonk like in this state let's say a yeah, feeling yeah. of bonking almost so so the thing that is there is more like it's inducing a state in the body rather than you actually fueling using it because you in order to fuel so let's say your idea was that you're going to replace what you're losing from your body because that's driving your body also out of homeostasis as well so you so you you, you are going to try to keep homeostasis as much as possible or try to keep the state of the body as unchanged as possible. That would mean that you would need to ingest ke- like so large amount of ketones during a race uh, that, that it's, it, it would be crazy.